What do you want? Is Emily not coming again today? Yeah, she's hiding under the counter. Butch Dingle, this is not some dating agency. So she hasn't fallen in sick today? No. Have you come in here to buy something or not? No, I haven't. I've come in here to see about Emily, cos I'm worried about her. You're worse than that father of hers. Hey, I'm nothing like her father. I'll have these. Well, that's all right. Don't bother speaking. Oh, hello, Betty. <laughs> Right, yeah, Emily's not coming again. So I'm going up to see if she's okay. I'm going to give her these. See you later. Oh. Doesn't it remind you of your long lost youth, Viv? My personal favourite is Love Divine, of course, it's entirely up to you. And uh, here are some uh, possible readings you may wish to choose from. <laughs> Ashley, I'm not exactly a novice at this, you know. I have had rather a bit of practice. <laughs> point taken, point taken. <laughs> but uh, I'll leave them with you anyway. Graham. Cathy. So, Graham, you're definitely not leaving? No, definitely not. I'm here to stay. Which is good news all round, isn't it, Cathy? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I wasn't seeing straight before, but I am now. Good. I'd be stupid to turn my back on the people who are so important in my life, wouldn't I? My thoughts entirely. When can I go back to work, Dad? I'm still thinking about it. I'll tell everyone I fell over on the farm. It's not that, Emily. You know very well it isn't that. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Emily. But you hurt me. You gave me no choice, did you? I'm sorry. I felt betrayed. You know how much I love you, how much I care for you. I know. And I warned you what it was like out there. The temptations. I let you down, I know. I'm protecting you, Emily, for your own good. I know, and I'm sorry. How could I ever trust you again? You can, Dad, you can. And how do I know you'll not see that lad again? Emily, how do I know? It's nice, Dad, if you just got... <laughs> You can trust me. Please let me go back to work. I promise I won't see Butch again. On your word. I'll have to take you in every day myself. Yeah? I'll pick you up after work. Can I go back today? I've got to check on one of Effers. Then I'll take you in. Oh, come on, you two. We're busy out there. Hey, do you mind? This is for your benefit. What? Do's and don'ts of being a best man? Of course, <clears throat> the only problem with being a best man is that you never get a chance to prove it. Ah. <sighs> Why? What? You sure we can afford this? I've been saving up my pocket money for ages. Hey, Lynn. Come on, we're starving. Burger and fries, please. We've been up since half five. Half five? Go out to our apartment farm. Why can't you eat at home? Mum's away. What is wrong with your dad? What do you mean? Well, as soon as your mum's away, he starts exploiting his kids. He doesn't. Well, he doesn't feed you properly. He does. And he has the flaming cheek to put up Marlon's rent. Uh, Lynn, what was that about Jack putting up rent at Annie's cottage? Oh, it's outrageous. I mean, Marlon's over there virtually on his own and Jack's gone and hiked up the rent. Well, it's tough. Um, so I'll be looking for someone to share with it. Well, yeah. I mean, Richie's moving in, but they could do one more now that Biff's at Cathy's. I've got uh, Biff not in. No, he's on the late shift. Huh. Why? Oh, I just wondered whether he's going to have morning suits at his wedding. You know, would it be in the best man's job to saw it all out? I don't know, Roy. You'll have to talk to him about it, OK? All right. Well, come on. I'm going to be late. Emily. What are you doing here? I've come to see you. For you. There for me? Yeah. That was for me. Oh, Emily, you 
You should be locked up for that. She can't stay here. You've got to go. I've done some bad things in my time, but I've never hit no woman. I promised I wouldn't see you, and I'm seeing you. Can I come in? You can't come in. I shouldn't even be looking at you, and I'm looking at you. Please. Can't. I really miss you, Emily, and I wanted to talk to you. But you mustn't tempt me. Have you missed me? I shouldn't be letting you in, but I'm letting you in. Did you like it? Yeah, it was great, mate. Oh, Roy, it was lovely. I kept imagining all the things we could do with it. I kept imagining all the things I could do with you in it. Roy? In every room. What are you like? No, I'm only joking, but let's face it, we do need a bit of privacy, don't we? Yeah, I suppose. Oh, I've been great in that, but what you might call inhibiting, especially with Scott always skulking about. Why'd you have to bring him into it? Why? Right, because he's always there, that's why. It's like a thin wall between him and us. I mean, come on, Kel, be honest, that's how the marriage don't mean brilliant, has it? It's been OK. Yeah, it's been all right, but we had to do it, do it. Yeah, I know. Sorry. You see, the reason I want this place, well, I ain't never had nothing that's just been mine, and, well, you know how much it means to me, Roy. I think I do. <laughs> so is this the new marital home, then? We hope so. <laughs> I think hope's as far as you're going to get, don't you? How are you going to afford that? We're going to use the money from Dad's insurance. Oh, really? That will be interesting. You can't stay long. I know. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, so would I. But we've run out of tea bags. Right. I had a really lovely time the other night, Emily. Yeah, I had a really lovely time and all. Yeah, so did I. We both had a really lovely time, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> we did, didn't we? <laughs> I think you better go now. Well, I've only just walked in. I know, but I promised me Dad I wouldn't see you. Did you? Yeah. Why did you do that? Cos I had to. Oh, my Dad wouldn't have let me go back to work. Close your eyes. What for? Never mind, just close them. Can you see me? No. That's all right, then. Just close your eyes when you're speaking to me and then you won't be seeing me, will you? <laughs> You've got a really lovely laugh, Emily. Have I? Yeah. Thanks. Hey, up, Jack. <laughs> hey, you're not after a job, are you? No, I used to pull pints, not others. <laughs> what can I do for you, then? Annie's cottage. Have you got a room going spare? Yeah, why? I fancy it. Really? I thought you were at Betty's. Yeah, well, Seth and Betty are a nice couple, but, uh, well, they're hardly a rock and roll generation, are they? No. No, it'd be great for me to mix with some lads my own age. Well, Marlon and Richie are hardly your own age, are they? Well, give or take a year or two. And I'm single like them, and uh, you'd be surprised how an old dog like me can teach a couple of young pups like them a new trick or two. Oh, yeah. So, how about it? OK, yeah. Great. You won't regret it. Uh, the rent's four fifty a month between the three of you. Yeah, no problem. And you can rest assured that at least you'll have somebody there who's uh, reliable, mature and sensible. I take it by that you're referring to Marlon. <laughs> so, Graham, was there anything in particular you wanted to chat about? I need your advice, Ashley. Well, fire away. That's what I'm here for. If you make one mistake in your life, or, or even two, D does that mean you're destined to keep repeating the same mistakes, or, or is it possible for a man to turn his destiny around? Graham, everything in life is possible. We all have the power within us to change. If this is about Rachel, you have to stop blaming yourself for her death. I have to start again, don't I? Exactly. Rachel wouldn't blame you. She'd want you to find happiness. You think? I know she would. And that's what you've got to do. Yes. Yes, you're right. And you know, Ashley, I think I can find happiness. Good. A and this time, I'll make sure everything turns out right. 
So let me get this straight. Does it mean that I can't see you at all? It means that I can't see you, but you can see me. Right. This is beyond me, is this? Can I talk to you? Um, I don't know. As a friend? Because I like talking to you, Emily. I like talking to you. And there's no harm in talking, is there? I suppose. Emily, you're a grown woman, you know. Your dad can't tell you who you can talk to and who you can't. He can? No, he can't. And he can't tell you how to run your life, neither. He does. Cos he's me dad. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. My dad's always telling us what to do and all. It ain't fair, is it? No. It's not fair. No. Do you want me to talk to him because I'm not scared of him? No, get out quick before he comes in. Go on. No. Please, go on. You mustn't see. If he sees you, he'll kill me. Go on. All right, all right, all right. I'm, go on, I'm get going, out. I'm going, I'm going. Okay, I'm going. Emily! One of the F isn't looking too good. I'm going to have to go back. You all right? Yeah. Be another half, I can take you in. Right. You won't let me down, will you, Emily? Because you let me down, I'll be very unhappy. And if I'm unhappy, You'll not be going back to that job of yours. Got it? Hiya. You've got a problem. What do you mean? Have you decided who's going to be your best man? Uh. No, no, I haven't, but it's either going to be Marlon or Roy. Oh. Well, there's your problem. Sorry? Because they both think they're best man. You're joking? I'm afraid not. <sighs> what am I going to do? Make your mind up, Biff. Hey, Marlon. I've got some good news for you. Your rent troubles are over. How do you write that one out? You got a new flat, mate. Yeah, Richie. And me. What? Yeah, well, I talked to Jack today. He's giving me a go-ahead. You're moving in? As soon as I can. <laughs> well, Terry, <laughs> you're very welcome, you know. Of course you're, I'm not saying you're not. It's just, well, <clears throat> to, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not sure it'd suit you. Why not? We've got some terrible habits. It's... Like? Oh, uh, well, we're noisy, we're messy, we get drunk. Sounds perfect. And, and we have late, late nights. So do I. Down Ollage Yard. I believe Eric has some rather grand plans for you and Home Farm. Oh, do you know about it? Well, he mentioned it yesterday, but no details. Well, Eric, he wants to turn Home Farm into a sort of a health and beauty spa. Really? Yeah. Well, actually, I think it's a really good idea, but uh, I'm not going to let him know about it yet. See what he comes up with. That's probably very wise. Stella, if ever you needed any advice, apart from that of Eric, as an elder statesman of the village, I'm always on hand. Oh, right, that's kind of you. I used to run Home Farm, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, very successfully for several years. Oh, right then. Well, thanks very much for your offer. I'll bear it in mind. It was for the best, you know, Gavin, not asking Stella for the money. Yeah, of course it was. Like you said, it wouldn't have been right. It wouldn't have. And I'm glad I persuaded you around to my way of thinking. Well, that's another thing I love about you, Bernice. Your scruples. Most people would have been after Stella's money like a rat down a drain. Oh, I thought you.
you've got the flu. I'm feeling better. What have you done to your face? I went a bit dizzy with this flu and fell over in the barn. Banged my face on a feed bin. Oh, it looks bad. No, it's nothing. <laughs> Dad says it'll probably knock some sense into me. By the way, this is me dad. Yes. We spoke on the phone. Very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Windsor. Uh, Emily's told me so many good things about you, Mrs. Windsor. Oh, really? And I'd just like to say uh, thank you for taking Emily under your wing, so to speak. Oh, well, I'm just doing my job. I know she needs patience, but she's a kind girl, and I think she very much appreciates the time you've taken over her, don't you? Well, she's a very nice girl. <laughs> Anyway, uh, after what's happened recently, I'd just like to say that uh, I'll be bringing Emily into work every day and picking her up. Oh, why is that? To be honest, uh, I don't want that lad hanging around her anymore. Oh, you mean Butch? And uh, if it's all right with you, Mrs Windsor, uh, when he comes in, uh, I'd rather Emily didn't serve him. I don't think that'll be a problem. You see, I'm worried that he's a very bad influence. You do know I have warned Emily about him. Oh, Emily didn't tell me that. Really? Well, I did. You see, he comes from this terrible family, the Dingles. Absolute rogues, all of them. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, but uh, thanks for telling me. I really appreciate it. He really isn't the type of lad for Emily. No, I can see that. Anyway, uh, uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Mrs Windsor. <laughs> and uh, I'll pick you up after work. Well, that is a surprise. What is it? Well, he was so charming. Nothing like he sounded on the phone. Now we fill the cavities with these smaller stones. Tell me this is some sort of wind-up, Jack. Hello, Marlon. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Terry? Exactly. That's not a wind-up. I don't believe this. But can you afford the rent on your own? No. That's not the point. If I've got a share with a bloke a few years from his Zimmer frame, you should at least have asked me. Terry will make a good, reliable tenant. You, you won't have to sit there night after night listening to him reminiscing about some amazing try he scored, ooh, or some, some bird he picked up in the 60s with a miniscope up to her armpits. That sounds fun. Jack, you can see me point. Just, just give me a week to find somebody else. Sorry, I've already promised it to Terry. Great. Cheers, mate. Now, when you fill these cavities... Penny for him. Oh, hello, Betty. So she's back? Yeah, this afternoon. How is she? Well? Something's happened. What do you mean? I can't tell you. Why not? Because it wouldn't be right coming from me. It's better off coming from her. I don't know you, kids. I don't suppose you'd say no to another pint. Lovely. <laughs> but I still can't tell you. Do you really think that's why I'm buying you a drink? This? Oh, all right, Graham, how are you doing? Fine. I just wanted to say thank you. For what? Well, it was seeing you and Kathy together and so happy. Well, it gave me hope and it made me realise something. Yeah, what's that? Well, you suffered tragedy with Linda, similar to the way I've suffered with Rachel. Yeah. And you found happiness, didn't you? Yeah. Well, that's what's given me hope. That's why I stayed. But, you know, I've also realised something else. Well, what's that? I know I can find happiness here. I know I can find the happiness that you've got. I'm sure you can, Graham. So am I, Biff. So am I. Compliments of the house. Oh, thank you. Uh, what have I done to deserve this? Nothing. May I join you? Yeah, of course. Oh, come on, Alan. When a landlord offers a free drink, it means there's something on his mind. What is it? Well, when you entrusted to Eric Pollard the day-to-day -day running of Home Farm, it worried me a great deal. Oh, why was that? Well, surely I can't be the only person who's warned you against him. Uh, no, you're not. But I, I wanted to add that my offer of advice was serious. And I'm seriously thinking about it. 
could. Well, when I sell the wool pack, I'll have a lot of free time on my hands. So I'd be glad to help you in any way I can. Thank you. And cheers. Mm. Oh. So when do you expect the deal to go through? Well, I was hoping very soon, but Bernice was trying to get a bid together, but unfortunately she couldn't raise the deposit. Oh, shame. Yes, my feelings entirely. She would have made an excellent landlady. You know, Bernice, I think it was very wise to be absolutely open with Alan. It wasn't easy, Ashley, but I'm pleased I did it. Especially as it's brought me and Gavin even closer together. Really? That's excellent news. Bernice, I'm so pleased for you. What's your game? What do you mean? Well, why are you still here? She ain't going to get the pub, so what are you still doing here? It may surprise you, Tricia, but I love Bernice. <laughs> I can see right through you. You use me, and you're using her an oyncha. No. We'll see. <laughs> Ready? Is it okay if I go, Mrs. Windsor? Well, it is five, isn't it? No, it's a minute after. Go on with you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mrs. Windsor. See you tomorrow. Can I yeah. Give this? See ya. Night. Night. Dad! Jimmy, in now. Put me in now. Put me get in. off her. Go on, get off her. If you lay one finger on her. What? Get away, go on, get away. I saw what you did. Get off me and don't you come anywhere near me. If you touch her again, leave me alone. Just, just get off. finger. Get off. Oi! What the heck's going on? Stop it, Butch Dingle. Stop it. What is all this? Do you know why Emily got those bruises on the side of her face? Do you? She fell. Her dad hit her. I saw him. Ask him. He hit her. Did you? Do you really think I could hit my own daughter? Emily, tell Viv. Go on, Emily, tell Viv what happened. Emily, tell her. Yes, go on, Emily. Thomas is into the truth. Did I it, yeah, Emily? Did I? Emily! So how did she get those bruises, then? Ask him. <laughs> 